sounding more and more like it should. Pretty cool. Arr, I love the sound of the didgeridoo. Hey, Captain. Keep it rocking and rolling. Hey, Captain. An impressive sound for sure. Captain. Oh, whoa. what is it? Giant squid. Oh, no. Oh, no, for sure. Grab onto something. The music podcast for kids is a super fun show. For kids and adults to musically grow. Learn about composers, different musical styles. Like rock, pop, country to give you a smile. Performing notes to the steady beat. It's a podcast that'll make you laugh and give your ears a treat. We learn about music from New York to Madrid. Please welcome to the music podcast for kids. Okay, let's see which country's music to learn about next. Hey, Mr. Henry. Um, so what are you doing with those darts? Good. Well, I'm trying to figure out which world music subject to learn about next. Uh, I don't think I follow. Oh, well, you see that big map of the world on the wall there? Yeah. Well, one of these darts is going to land on a place on the map. And that's going to be the place we learn about next. Ah, I get it. Sounds fun. All right, take a shot there. Let's see where it lands. Well, okay. Here we go. And... Oh, wow. Well, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe try it again. I'm not sure if the moon has any music going on up there. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, my aim is a little off there. Maybe the aliens have been jamming on the rocking <laughs> guitar or drum set. Or... Okay, you are shaking your head no at me. Just take another shot, Mr. Henry. Okay, okay. here I go. And... Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, a little cold up there. Yeah, just a little. But we could possibly meet the big guy, Santa Claus. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it's awfully cold, and I just put away all my winter clothes. Um, maybe try one more dart. All right. The last one. I'm closing my eyes on this one. And... Whoa, nice shot, Mr. Henry. I think that'll do it. Which one is it? Oh, sweet. I've always wanted to go there. We can learn about the didgeridoo and visit the Sydney Opera House. Time to learn about the music of Australia. Australia. And now the music joke of the day. We love jokes. So if you have a joke, please visit our website, themusicpodcastforkids.com, to submit your joke. And guess what? It doesn't even have to be a music joke. It can be any joke. We will read and enjoy your joke on the podcast and also let everyone know who it came from and where you are in this great, big, wonderful music world. Our joke of the day is... This joke is from a listener, Evelyn. Evelyn's joke is... What is a dog's favorite breakfast food? Wuffles. <laughs> Get it? Woofles. Make sure to send in your jokes by visiting our website, themusicpodcastforkids.com. A link to the website can be found in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you are enjoying the show so far. Please subscribe to the podcast to receive the latest episodes and leave a review through iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Also, get updates on what we are up to through Facebook and Instagram by finding us at Music Podcast for Kids. Links will be found in the show notes. On to the show! And now, the main subject of the day. Is this place open? Yeah, I think so. I mean... The door was open, so I would think it's open. Yeah, but I don't see anyone around. Oh, here. Let's ring the bell at the desk. The sign here says, don't ring that bell for service. Just ring that bell to talk to the most smartest great guy on the planet? What? That seems a little odd. Ha, 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 ha. Hello, hello, and welcome. It's your host with the most... And travel agent, Mr. Jerry Slapdash. Mr. Slapdash? I thought you were a radio talk show host, not a travel agent. Well, I'm a travel agent on the side. Open every day from 9 to 5. Oh, great. Well, good to see you again. 
Yeah, we're looking to learn more about the music from Australia. And what better way to learn about it than to travel to Australia? Ah, well, you've come to the right place. Australia is beautiful and only a couple hour road trip up north, so you've come to the right place. Uh, only a couple hours north? Um, Mr. Slapdash, we are in Pennsylvania, the United States. Australia is a long plane ride o- over the ocean. Yeah, Mr. Slapdash. We were hoping you could help us get there. We have a coupon code here ah, and... Ah, right, of course. Australia. I thought you said uh, Australia. Well, what does it matter? I will get it figured out for you. Okay, great. So, we figured a plane ride would be best, even though I'm not the biggest fan of flying. Well, I think I have something delightful for you as you travel to Austria. Um, Australia, Mr. Slapdash. Australia. (laughs) Ha ha, right, of course. Uh, That's what I said. So, step right up and let's check out the wonderful options we have here at Travel USA. The travel company that travels the world. Okay, so here we have three doors. Behind each door you will find an incredible method of transportation for your trip to Alabama. Australia. So which door would you like to choose? Oh boy. I don't know. What do you think, Mr. Fight? Door number one? Yeah, sure. Okay. Mr. Slapdash, let's go with door number one. Ah, great choice, Ed. What do you have for them, Johnny? Johnny? Oh, he must be on break. So, behind door number one is... 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 Oh, come on, Mr. Slapdash. Is a 21 speed mountain bike. Ha ha ha. Congratulations. This mountain bike can go 21 different speeds from super slow to super fast. And its seat is pretty comfortable. Actually, last time I rode it down to the market, it was a little. Mr. Slapdash, we can't use this to get to Australia. Yeah, Mr. Slapdash. How are we supposed to ride one bike over the ocean? Oh, boy. Ah, right, of course. Uh, Well, we will get that bike right out of here. There are two more doors to pick. Which one is next? Well, let's see. Uh, What's behind door number two? Great choice. The number two is a fantastic number. Easy to count two from one, just count one, then two, one, then two. Uh, okay, one, m- Mr. Slapdash, then... all right, can we see what's behind door number two? Oh, maybe this was a bad ha, idea. Ha. Right, of course. Behind door number two is a canoe for two. Hey, ooh, that rhymes. A canoe for two will get you to where you are going in no time at all. With state of the art paddles made of wood. You will cut through any water with speeds up to three, four, maybe five miles per hour. Congratulations! You did it! Oh boy. Mr. Slapdash, it'll take forever to get across the ocean with a canoe for two. Okay, let's just see what's behind door number three. Ha! Great choice. Door number three. Drum roll, please. Where's that drum roll coming from? And I think you're gonna love what's behind door number three. It's a submarine. Ha ha ha, congratulations. Your trip to Alaska can be with this submarine built in the year 1953. Cruise in comfort, underwater with the whales and little fishies and other little fishies. And guess what, today and only today, you get a special instrument thrown in. The didgeridoo. Wait a tick. Mr. Slapdash, did you say you are adding a didgeridoo? Um, well, uh, yes, of, of course. Well, that's perfect, Mr. Slapdash, because that instrument is from Australia, which is exactly where we're going. 
But traveling in a submarine? Oh, come on, Mr. Fight. It'll be cool, and no other travel agent would throw in a didgeridoo. It's perfect. Yeah, that's true. Well, Mr. Slapdash, book us on the submarine to Australia. Fantastic. Ha, 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 ha. And here is your didgeridoo. Thanks for visiting Travel USA, where we travel anywhere in the world. Except for places outside of the United States. Uh, have a great trip to Altoona. Oh, and don't I look so good looking and smartest? Well, I guess we are booked. Yep, and we have this sweet didgeridoo. I just wish I knew how to play it. Oh, look, that must be Johnny to help us with our bags. Thanks, Johnny. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. We will figure out how to play the didgeridoo on the submarine for sure. So, what's the deal with this instrument? It doesn't look like much. It's just a long tube. Well, you're right. The didgeridoo is typically cylindrical, which means it makes a tube shape with an open top and bottom. They can also be conical, which means it kind of looks like a cone shape as well. Mmm, cone. Like an ice cream cone? Do they come in just one size? Nope. They can come in all different sizes. Typically, they are 1 to 3 meters or 3 to 10 feet long. Wow, 10 feet long? That's pretty big. Sure is. The longer the didgeridoo, the lower the sound gets. I bet that's a pretty low sound. For sure. Actually, that's how all instruments work. Instruments that are small produce high sounds, and instruments that are big produce low sounds. Cool. You can even relate high and low pitches to animals. Think of a small bird. It flies high in the air. Small equals high sounds. And a big elephant is always low on the ground. Big equals low sounds. That's a great way to think of it. Yeah, you don't see many elephants flying around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I guess we better get loaded into the submarine. I wonder who is running this thing. Arr! Well, hello, mateys. And welcome. Mr. Captain Guy? Yeah, Mr. Captain Guy? I thought you only navigated a ship. Well, I got my submarine license yesterday. Y yesterday Arr, Yes, I took a crash course. <laughs> <laughs> crash course. Good one, Captain. <laughs> oh, oh, quiet down and get the engines fired up there. What's that long thing you have in the bag there? Oh, that's a didgeridoo. It's an instrument from Australia. Well, I didgeridig dig it. <laughs> Didgeri, didgeridig dig it. Oh, oh shh, 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 shh. So enjoy your stay on the submarine and watch out for giant squids. Giant squids? Yeah, giant squids. What are you talking about? Oh, no worries. I know the sea like the back of my eyelids. So, we will get to Australia with no problems. Time to go down under. Australia's a country, it's also a continent. Good day, mate. Hello, friend, is what they meant. There's wallabies, wombats, koalas, and kangaroos. When you hear the natives play music, you'll hear didgeridoos. Australia. Beautiful place they call Down Under There's snow on the mountains and sunshine on the coast is central, it's real hot and it's remote. Waltzing Matilda
does a folk song about a bloke The ending is creepy, it says we can hear his ghost Beautiful place they call Down Under Well, the didgeridoo is played just like an instrument from the brass family. We learned about the brass family in another episode and found out that in order to play a brass instrument, you must use your air and buzz your lips at the same time. Ah, buzz your lips. I think that's the part I'm having trouble with. No worries. Keep working on it. The didgeridoo came from the aboriginal people of northern Australia around a thousand years ago. Didgeridoo. Hmm, it's an interesting name for an instrument. How'd they come up with that name? The name didgeridoo actually wasn't even a name created by the people of Australia. It's considered an onomatopoetic term. Onomatopoetic? Yes, that's a word to describe the sound something makes. So, for example, the word meow or roar is a word that describes a cat or lion sound. The word didgeridoo was created because of how the instrument sounds. Oh, wow. Well, I hope I can make it sound like that. I need to keep practicing. So, if the name didn't come from the aboriginals, what did they call it? The instrument had many different names, like Yadaki, Mandipul, and Mago. Different parts of Australia had different names for the instrument. Some names were given out of respect to well-known performers, and then, of course, the word bamboo was given to the instrument because of the material it's made out of. Hmm, the material? Um... Oh, come on, Mr. Henry. A long time ago, the didgeridoo was made out of bamboo. Ah, right, of course. Yes, bamboo. But this didgeridoo is made out of wood? Well, it's true. The traditional didgeridoos are made out of hardwood, but they can also be made out of bamboo. The end where you place your mouth to play is a ring of hardened beeswax. The beeswax allows a performer to properly form the embouchure to make a sound. Embouchure? Yep, an embouchure. That's a fancy way of saying the way you set up your mouth and lips on the mouthpiece to create the sound. Remember, you have to use your air and buzz your lips to make the sound on the didgeridoo. Give it another try there. Well, okay. Arr, is everything okay down there? Sounds a little gassy. <laughs> a little gassy. <laughs> Good one, oh, Captain. I'll keep, I'll keep it down there and check the monitor for giant squids. That's the last thing we want. Giant squids? Yeah, Mr. Captain, did you say giant squid? So, that's a pretty nice didgeridoo there. I made one myself at home with some PVC pipe. Oh, wow, Mr. Captain. Well, that's pretty cool. I didn't know you could make your own. Yeah, you can totally make your own didgeridoo at home and with help from an adult. PVC pipe is a way to do it. Pretty cool. Okay, let me try this again. Oh, that's sounding more and more like it should. Pretty cool. Arr, I love the sound of the didgeridoo. Hey, Captain. Keep it rocking and rolling. Hey, Captain. An impressive sound for sure. Captain. Oh, well, what is it? Giant squid. Oh, no. Oh, no, for sure. Grab onto something. Arr, man, the station. What stations? Oh, no worries, mateys. I have complete control. Oh, 
Oh, he's a big one. Hey, Captain, I, I was reading that giant squid can be scared away from a bull roar. The bull roar? What is that? The bull roar is said to be used by aboriginals for ceremonies and other special events. Actually, it's been used all over the world for thousands of years. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. I'll grab it out of the bag Mr. Slapdash gave us. Oh, look. It says here, in case of a giant squid, take the bull roar out and play it. But how do you play it? Toss it to me! You just take this rectangular piece of wood that is connected to this cord and simply wave it around in the air, and it makes a super cool low sound. Well, give it a nice swing a Rooney. <laughs> nice swing a Rooney. <laughs> oh, just keep it down over okay, there. Okay, here I go. I think the squid left. Yeah, I think you're right. Nice job, Mr. Fight. Ah, well, it looks like my marvelous navigational skills got rid of that giant squid. What? Pretty sure it was Mr. Fight's bull roar. Arr, Mr. I think we've made it to your destination. Australia. Up we go. Cool. Yeah, let's get off this submarine. We have a tour scheduled right away. Ah, the fresh air. Ah, and the sun. Boy, I missed the sun. Wow. Sydney, Australia. Yeah, wow. G'day guys, I'm Tim, your tour guide, and welcome to Sydney, Australia. Well, hello Tim. Pleasure to meet you. Yeah, pleasure to meet you, Tim. Crikey, did you travel in a submarine to get all the way to Australia? Uh, yeah, long story. Yeah, which you probably wouldn't even believe. So, I think our travel agent booked a tour, but not exactly sure which one. Well, let me have a Captain Cook over here. Arr, did someone say Captain? The Captain is right here, making it happen. A <laughs> good one, Captain, making it happen. Oh, oh shh, <laughs> quiet down over there and tie up the submarine. Oh, no, mate. To have a Captain Cook means to take a look. Ah, oh, gotcha. So, let's see. What is scheduled here for Mr. Henry and Mr. Fight today? And it looks like, yes, this Arvo is a tour of the Sydney Opera House. Oh, great. I've always wanted to check that out. What's an Arvo? I'm not really sure. Maybe... Arvocado. With toast is my favorite. <laughs> Good one, Captain Arvocado. Oh, oh just... <laughs> Oh, no, guys. Arvo means this afternoon. Oh, gotcha. Well, then I'll be right here with the submarine. All Arvo. Sounds great, Captain. Uru for now. And here it is, the Sydney Opera House. Wow, what a cool place. I know, totally cool. The Sydney Opera House was opened in October of 1973. We have over 1,500 performances every year with over a million people attending this fabulous venue. Wow. So is that just one huge stage? Actually, there are many different performance venues within the Opera House. The largest is the Concert Hall, which seats just over 2,500 people. There are a couple of theatres as well and even a recording studio. Sweet. What kind of performances take place here? All types, really. Music of many styles. Plays, musicals, you name it, and we've probably got it. And let me look here. Yes, it looks like tonight you have tickets for the didgeridoo performance. Perfect. Well, thanks, Tim. Any recommendations for food before the show? Uh, yeah, well, why don't you come over to my place for a barbie? Barbie? He means barbecue. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Well, thanks so much, Tim. You're very welcome. This way. And that's the music of... Australia. Australia. The Music Podcast for Kids is brought to you by Mr. Henry's Music World YouTube channel. If you are interested in learning how to play the piano with a fun and engaging curriculum geared toward kids, please subscribe to Mr. Henry's YouTube channel called Mr. Henry's Music World. Links will be found in the show notes. Again, we thank you so much for tuning in. Just chat, just chat, just chat, just chat, just chat, just chat, just chat. Hello, music podcast for kids listeners. We are delighted to have a very special guest on our show today, Mr. Tim Topham. 
Tim is an extraordinary music teacher who specializes in teaching kids and adults the piano. Not only does Tim teach kids how to play the piano, but he also teaches other music instructors, like myself and Mr. Fight, on how to become, well, better music teachers. So any teachers who are listening, make sure to visit Tim's website, topmusic.co, and even subscribe to his awesome podcast called TopCast. Plenty of fantastic resources to help teachers start or enhance their professional journey. Another cool fact about Mr. Topham is that he is from and still lives in Australia. We learned all about the music from Australia today and thought it would be extra special to have Tim on the show to discuss what kind of cool things are happening with music in Australia today. So here is Tim Topham. Hello, Tim, and welcome to the show. Well, Bill, thank you so much for having me. I'm an honored guest. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for doing this. This is this is really cool. So, um, yeah, in the introduction, I talked about uh, Mr. Tim here, and he was actually even in the show earlier. He was our tour guide when we went to Australia. That was good and, fun. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so I wanted to know, what part of Australia do you live in? So I'm in a city called Melbourne, okay. uh, not Melbourne, Melbourne, right. which is in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, so we have quite cold weather. It's winter here at the moment. Okay. Okay. And um, so it, is that fairly close to Sydney, Australia? Yes. Uh, it's a one-hour flight or a 10-hour drive. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's still pretty far drive-wise. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah. So as we're, as we're talking here, we're in July. And so where I live in PA, Pennsylvania, summertime, pretty hot, but down there it is uh, winter and it does get cold, right? It does, yes. We can even ski, uh, Bill. Oh, okay. Uh, Three-hour drive from Melbourne, we can ski uh, at a number of different ski fields and we can surf. So it's a pretty cool place. Yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, that's neat. Great. Well, so when growing up, what kind of musical experiences did you have as a kid in school? So in school, I remember we would sing the national anthem uh, at least once a week at assemblies and mm -hmm. we would have music classes. So right. there was a lot of drumming and uh, tuned percussion and things like that in our yep. classes. And then I, uh, as do many children, take up uh, took up piano lessons and okay. uh, musical instruments as an individual uh, outside of school as my parents thought it was uh, kind of fun because I was mucking around on a little keyboard and annoying everyone. So they thought I should have some lessons. <laughs> yeah, that's neat. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, that's good. So your main instrument was piano, but are there other instruments that you <laughs> learned or performed today? Yeah, I do. I, I have played drums and I have played um, a bit of guitar too. Oh, nice. And I, in fact, uh, when I was a school teacher, I had to learn and then teach trombone and trumpet as okay. well. Okay. Now yep. my son's learning trumpet, so that's actually come in handy. Oh, that's, yeah, that's great. Yeah, actually, so I teach K through five general music and um, it was just this year that I took over the band program as well. Mm. So I had to brush up on all my trumpet and trombone and violin <laughs> and clarinet and flute. Yeah, you know, I had to teach all of them uh, while I've teaching. Been a band, uh, I've been a band director as well. And okay. uh, yeah, I know it really does help if you can play just a little bit of a few different instruments. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really good at hot cross buns on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so one of the places that we talked about in the show was um, in Sydney was the Sydney Opera House. Um, have you ever seen any performances there? You know what? I haven't actually, which is a bit okay. embarrassing to say. <laughs> uh, but what I will say is that Melbourne, where I live, is actually the better known as the cultural and music and dining and oh. food destination in Australia. So Sydney has the amazing sites and the harbour yeah. and the opera house. Right. But Melbourne has much more of the musicals oh, and live okay. music and those kinds of things. So I actually see a lot of it here, but yeah. I've never been to a show in the Opera House itself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's neat. Okay, I didn't realize that. That's really mm. cool. Um, so in the show, one of the instruments that we focused on a lot was the didgeridoo. Uh, mm -hmm. So is, the, is a didgeridoo still used often in live or recorded music in Australia today? 
No, it's not, Bill. Uh, okay. it, it was made popular when I was a teenager. There was a band called Yothu Yindi. It was an Aboriginal band that made the pop charts in Australia, oh, and okay. they used didgeridoo, and it was kind of it was a dance track actually, and yeah. that was very very popular for a while. Um, but really, we only hear didgeridoos in Aboriginal ceremonial situations, right? Uh, or sometimes, occasionally, in a song or uh, an orchestral piece, but it will be very rare these days. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, that's neat. So. In my music class, we do uh, learn some some tunes from Australia, some folk tunes, uh, Waltzy Matilda and Kookaburra. Um, and Cook, uh, so that was Kookaburra? Kooka, is, did I say that right? <laughs> so I'd say Kookaburra. Kookaburra. Am I saying that right? Kookaburra. Kookaburra. <laughs> That's it. Oh, okay. Yeah, when we Kookaburra sing Kookaburra sits in the old Right, yeah. Right, you guys learned that song. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Gee, Actually, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. My mom, she well, she was a music teacher, and that's how I learned it. She taught us that song. I'm so embarrassed yeah. to say that I wouldn't be surprised if most children in Australia would not be familiar with that song. Oh, okay. Well, and, you know. Which is, makes me kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not even sure if it's really a popular one that uh, other music teachers in the United States sing and play? I, I'm not sure, right. actually. Um, okay. But I think it was just because my mom taught that piece mm. to us, that folk tune, um, that – that you know, it would be natural that I teach it. So, um, and you can sing it in a round, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. how we would do it. Yep. There you yeah. go. And waltzing yeah. Matilda. That is yeah, really good. And, and waltzing Matilda. Yeah, absolutely. Is that is that something that kids in Australia? So Kookaburra, maybe not, right? But um, yeah, most kids would know. Well, I would like to think that all kids would know waltzing Matilda. Yeah, and in right. actual fact, there was a push not long ago that it should become our national anthem. Right. Right. Love it much more than. Our Australian national anthem. Okay, right. Yeah, I did. I was reading that. Reading that, that they kind of it was almost like uh, an unofficial national anthem. Mm, yeah, right? that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that that's great. Um, Why? Well, I, th- I really thank you so much for doing this, Tim. It's it's always great to hear. You know what's really going on in Australia, and uh, I, this this it's couldn't have been more perfect. So I just really appreciate it, and uh, I wish you all the best. Well, thank you very much, and I'll say farewell and uh, look forward to hearing your future shows. Thanks so much for having me on. All right. Thank you, Tim. Bye-bye. Time to wrap it up, folks. Thank you so much for tuning into the Music Podcast for Kids. We hope you enjoyed the show, and most importantly, learned something cool today about music. Remember to send in your jokes or even a topic in music you would like us to discuss by visiting our website, themusicpodcastforkids.com. If you are interested in awesome educational and fun songs for your kids to listen and sing along with, please visit brucefight.com. Music is available to download with iTunes, CD Baby, and Facebook. And most streaming platforms like Spotify and Amazon Radio. Links will be found in the show notes. If you are interested in learning how to play the piano with a fun and engaging curriculum geared toward kids, please subscribe to Mr. Henry's YouTube channel called Mr. Henry's Music World. Links will be found in the show notes. Please visit iTunes to leave a review of the podcast and also share the podcast with friends, relatives, aliens, whoever. Again, we thank you so much for tuning in.